Let's talk about how an electric car might charge itself through thin air, just like magic, while being driven or, even more importantly, while driving itself. You might be surprised to learn that wireless EV charging is not the future, it is the present. It is here right now, and we've just got to figure out how to implement this breakthrough into the electrification of our transportation system. And we're talking about more than just a luxury item here. This transcends the simple idea of just being able to park your car in your garage without plugging it in. This is how we make robo-taxis a reality. This is how we make electric semi-trucks and delivery vans and buses happen. Because we know that there are limitations on just making bigger batteries. We hit the law of diminishing returns pretty hard when we scale up too far. So the way that we get around that is a constant, or at least a very frequent, trickle charge straight from the road and into the vehicle. If we want a Tesla robo-taxi on every street, a Tesla semi on every highway, wireless charging is a technology that can make it happen. So the first very important thing to know is that when we talk about current generation wireless charging for EVs, we are not talking about the same method that charges your phone and your smartwatch. The wireless charging that we are accustomed to is called electromagnetic induction. And as anyone who's ever quarreled with a wireless charging pad knows, this technology requires a very precise alignment between the device and the charging pad. And it also requires very close proximity. It's finicky, and it's not very efficient. Typically, you'll get close to 80% energy transfer if you're very lucky, but probably less than that. The reason that electromagnetic induction is so limited is because the charging pad is broadcasting its magnetic field out in all directions, omnidirectional. And if a receiving coil comes within that magnetic field, then the two can share energy. The strength of that field is limited because most of the induction is not going into the receiving coil. It can't be focused. So electromagnetic induction suffers at the hands of something called the inverse square law. Basically, that means that the energy diminishes rapidly over distance. And that doesn't work for cars because they sit above the ground. You would need a docking station with a raised connector, and the car would have to meet it perfectly, like the way a Roomba docks to its charging station. The way we fix that is through magnetic resonance charging. In this method, both the pad and the receiver are turned to resonate at a very specific frequency. And through that very specific resonance, the energy can transfer more like a focused tunnel, and that equals a much more efficient transfer. Magnetic resonance offers an identical charging efficiency to a hardwired connection. From the grid to the vehicle, it's about 92% efficient at transferring energy. For current generation home charging systems, that means about 11 kilowatts of charging power, which is basically the same as a Tesla wall unit. This technology is being pushed forward by a company called Ytricity. They have a production-ready charging pad and receiver that can be retrofit into just about any electric vehicle. The in-car unit is about the size of a pizza box. The company says that the cost is equivalent to a traditional plug-in charging system for electric cars, and the home charging pad is going to be pretty expensive at something over $2,000 US to install. And what's more, this system supports bi-directional energy transfer. So not only can the grid send power to the car wirelessly, the car can send power to the grid or to the house. This is all particularly relevant for a Tesla channel because all this comes from Nikola Tesla, the human being. His Tesla coil that bears his name is an electrical resonant transformer circuit. They are famous for transmitting electricity through thin air. Tesla coils are obviously a lot more dramatic in their operation with the lightning bolts and everything. This does not happen with modern magnetic resonance. Really, the closest common analogy to this would be an induction cooktop. It transfers energy directly from the pad into the metal pan through a magnetic field. And wireless EV charging is just as safe as an induction stove. 
It doesn't generate any radiation or anything like that. It can just shut down automatically if anything metallic other than a car gets too close to the coil. Also wanted to give a quick shout out to our amazing Discord community. Here is our question of the week, and this was our favorite answer. And here is the meme of the week winner. Join our Discord community to participate next week through the link in the description below. It doesn't take much stretching of the imagination to see how this technology can be massively helpful for an autonomous vehicle fleet like the Tesla RoboTaxi network. Any time that these cars spend off the road and plugged into a cable is time taken away from productivity and efficiency. It's time when the car is not making any money or doing anything useful. So ideally, we want to minimize that downtime as much as possible. The advantage to a typical taxi service is that they spend a lot of time using very predictable routes, starting a trip at the airport or the train station and ending at a hotel. The majority of time that a taxi spends sitting still is while queuing up at something like an airport pickup zone and waiting for passengers. So we know the exact location to strategically deploy an in-road charging coil. They don't need to be everywhere, they just need to be concentrated in the right places to be effective. This would also mean that autonomous self-driving vehicles can also charge autonomously as well. No need for a person to come along and plug them in. Do you remember when Tesla had that prototype for a robotic self-plugging charging cable that was like a weird electric snake thing? This is a much more simple and streamlined method with zero moving parts. This is also a technology that is ready to go right now. Tests have been done that show energy transfer through the asphalt to the car at speeds up to 100 kilometers per hour. That's a bit less than 60 miles per hour and at a maximum charge rate of 20 kilowatts. So we're not talking about fast charging here, but it's more like what people in the industry refer to as energy stacking. Even just a couple of intermittent wireless charging sessions throughout the day can greatly extend the range of an electric car, allowing it to stay in service longer. And then of course, recharging fully at night when demand for the service is low has a much lower impact on productivity. At some point, the car would only ever need to stop for cleaning the interior. I don't know where we're at with self-cleaning vehicles, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. High-powered wireless charging for commercial vehicles like the Tesla Semi is already in development. One company called Wave thinks that they can push wireless charging to 500 kilowatts or even one megawatt in time to service the Tesla Semi. Wave has already built one test station for wirelessly recharging electric buses in Salt Lake City, and that's the ultimate answer to the issue of the electric semi's 500 mile range. It is incredible for an electric vehicle of that size with that amount of towing capacity, but it's still nowhere near the 2,000 miles or more that a conventional truck can drive on a full tank of diesel. The next point is for the Tesla energy nerds. We love the decentralized virtual power plant model that Tesla has developed for their Powerwall home batteries. The battery pack in your electric car is also a store of energy that you have at home. And those typically hold five or more times the capacity of a Powerwall. The biggest issue being that Tesla's native inverter is not bi-directional, so you can't get access to that energy to power your house or anyone else's. But these new wireless systems do support bi-directional power transfer, so your personal car could power your house in case of an outage, and it wouldn't even need to be plugged in as long as it's parked in the driveway, you have instant backup because you never know when an emergency is going to come along. I'm sure most people don't leave their car plugged in all the time, but that's also got us thinking about how larger fleets of these robo-taxis parked on wireless charging pads can function as decentralized power plants in extreme circumstances. So just in the past week, we've seen two devastating hurricanes strike North America, the first hitting the east coast of Canada and the second Florida's Gulf Coast. 
These caused a number of problems to happen all at once. But one of the biggest and longest lasting issues is a lack of access to electricity. Obviously, robo-taxis can't fix broken power lines, but they can do a lot to eliminate the need for fossil fuel generators. We can deploy these robo-taxis to hospitals, community centers, fire halls. As long as they have coils installed in the parking lot, it would only take a couple of electric cars to power the building. Lucid have claimed that the bi-directional inverter in the air will allow the car to power an average house for five days. So the possibilities for this are pretty wide ranging, and there's a lot of good that the technology can do. Now, having said that, there is no plan that we know of for Tesla or any other EV maker to widely adopt wireless charging anytime soon. As far as we know, there is only one production EV that has come from the factory with wireless capability. That's the Genesis G760 from Hyundai. It's a model only available in South Korea. So we are still in the very early days. BMW did include wireless charging with one of their 5 Series vehicle, but it's a hybrid, not a full EV, so who cares? I think that, on the whole, Tesla should be much more concerned about solving their autonomous driving software than wireless charging systems. FSD needs to come first before this system really becomes useful anyways. Because, on its own, for a home charging system, wireless does feel like an entirely unnecessary luxury item. You know, just use the damn plug. But, for the commercial purposes, for robo-taxis and large-scale commercial vehicles, that's where this technology has a lot of value to offer and can become a real game changer for electrification. But as always, what do you think? How long until we start seeing wireless charging coils embedded in our roads and parking lots? Drop your theories below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.